Okay, I now want to show you the orient constraint, how to use it with dynamics. I didn't cover the orient constraint. I'm not going to be using it, I don't think, in this catapult scene. So I just definitely want to kind of touch base on it so I don't lose any gaps behind in my curriculum here. All right, so here I'm going to make two donuts. Okay. So donut one and donut two. Donut 2 will be levitating up here, and donut, this one right here, is going to drive this donut. So what I want to do is rotate this one and have this one rotate. So it, this becomes the driver, this becomes the driven, and under constraints, or animation, we have this orient constraint, square box it. Now the orient constraint properties are constrain all axes. Remember, you, you should always constrain just the ones that you're kind of using. In this case, I'm going to constrain Y. Okay. By hitting apply, that should have constrained it. And let's see if that rotated. And it sure does. does. Okay, that's very cool. Now, when I rotate it this way, nothing's going to happen. And I rotate it this way, nothing's going to happen. But only when I rotate around this way. So kind of always stay true to that idea of constraining only the things that you need to constrain. Now, let's uh, make a flapper on this for a second. Let's do the face on this. And let's extrude it out. Believe it or not, what has happened here is my center of mass has changed on the object. Uh, in a second here, I'll have to actually change that principle and to match a new center of mass within the center of the object here rather than here. So just be careful when you extrude. I'm going to make a sphere. Okay, and this sphere is going to collide with this item. First, I'm going to assign it some dynamics. So it's going to be a passive rigid item. Okay, and I'll put a keyframe here. And I'm only translating it in the Z axis. So I'm going to key select it. And see how I'm having a hard time key selecting the item? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so if you're having a hard time key selecting an item, you'll see that it is a rigid body. And it's set to active off. If I put on on. and try to key set it, you'll see that it equally has a problem. But this time, it allows me to force the item into being keyed. Isn't that kind of cool? Now I have a new thing, a new color to add to your spectrum, green. Okay, so green, it means, you know, it's got a, a blue and a <laughs> blue and a yellow makes green, right? So now you can see that it's keyed and it's also got some kind of other thing on it, um, which is a dynamic property. So keyed and dynamic equals green. Okay, now if I go over here, move it forward, you'll find that it is hard to move forward. You can't do it. Okay, let's switch this back to off for a second. You notice the keyframe stays still, and now I can move it. And I can set key. So if I, dynamics are very hard to key sometimes. So if anything fails, that's a cheap and dirty way to turning it on and off using the active to switch it that way. Now this one, it's hooked up to a constraint. How much problems are we going to have here? Well, let's go in here and uh, 
create deformers. Uh, let's go back into dynamics for a second. And then we are going to make this an active rigid body. Looks like it went okay. Even though the constraints on it. And what will happen here is when the ball collides with this, it's going to push it out of the way. Well, we don't want to do that. We want it to spin. Now the problem here is, here is the difference between a dynamic constraint and a constraint based upon, you know, just locking it up in the world. This little dude right here is my center of mass. So to move that, what I want to do is going to uh, transform display its uh, selection handle. And that way I can see the center of mass here. And I can move that center of mass on rigid body. So what I want to do is hand crank this X so it matches this little X right here. Okay, so I'm going to move it that way. And it's very confusing sometimes to move one of these items. Now if I want to do this in the top, it might help me out a little bit. So here's what I'm targeting, that center right there. So I'm going to kind of move that one there. And move that one there. And move that one there. There, they all match up. Unfortunately, you just can't point snap those together. Now, that it has a new center of mass, what I can do is now add a dynamic constraint along with the other constraint and have them work together. So this time, I want a hinge constraint. And I don't want it to be hinged across that axis. That would be weird. So what I want to do is rotate these axes to match a 90. That way it's up and down. Now, that's the difference between constraints. This, the first constraint will actually rotate the objects just fine, but this one's a dynamic constraint. So if a dynamic hits this dynamic, like it's gonna it'll rotate around, and then you can see it's rotating that around. Learn to make these widgets, I call them, and I, I like to set up these little widgets with the students, and I'll have them make their own little widgets. So before we actually uh, make a catapult, uh, make a widget based upon the ideas that I've given you. So I've given you the, all the constraints, the orient, aim, and I've shown you some of the dynamic constraints, just one of them. Um, but you can kind of play around with the other ones if you need to. And as we go along, we'll get more and more of the dynamic constraints down too as we go into the projects. So for, for right now, make a widget based upon the ideas that I've given you and let's see what you get.